What is going on, guys? Welcome back. Commentary for you. If you have problems distinguishing between us, I'm going to be the one that sounds awake. Jimmy is going to be the one that sounds like he's almost asleep. But here we are. <laughs> what are we doing with our lives? 1240, 1240 in the morning. Um, we've just got done watching. Uh, let's see. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Seven, eight hours straight worth of fights, at least for yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And you're here to click on a video at probably close to 1 a.m. So welcome to whatever it is that we're doing. So, wow. Let, let's start off here. We don't often cover Bellator, but when we do, we only cover the co-main and the, co -main and the main. Um, Caldwell really easily got works out of there. Um you know, I don't know if it's just a, a limited grappling knowledge for Borix at this point, but I worry that's a blueprint to beat him going forward because, listen, uh, a lot of wrestlers can do that. I would really be interested to hear his corner during that whole exchange because I feel like uh, they could have talked him through some positions to defend that better. Uh, but honestly, listen, all the things I said about Caldwell pre-show we're still kind of there, but man, you can't take away from this performance. He literally walked through a guy um, and, you know, took down a really tough competitor, a top competitor, a worthy competitor. Uh, and I will say this is one of the more impressive performances I've seen in a long time. Yeah, but it's one of those things where I always wonder about a fighter. If he, he does what you expect him to do and at the pace you expect him to fight in. And you didn't have an answer for it. What were you preparing for? Now, I know Darren Caldwell is a very talented fighter, very talented wrestler, extremely explosive national champion. All the accolades are true. But if you're Borix's team, you got to say, look, that first round, that dude's dangerous. He gets significantly less dangerous as the fight goes along. Now, you have to be prepared for that. And the fight that got him, I mean, the, the submission that got him was one hook in, a rear naked choke, arm just got under the chin, and then, you know, Darion Caldwell put the squeeze on him. The one submission he gets with regularity is the rear naked choke. And and the fact that Borg, who's a, a naturally much bigger guy, didn't have the slight tactical adjustments necessary to at least not tap or kind of get out of that position early on in the fight was a little strange. It's like, look, that's what he's going to come at you with. Explosive takedown. He'll get the rear naked if you turn your back. And what happened? took him down, and then as soon as his back got half-turned, he got choked. And so, Darren Caldwell, you know, a great performance by him. Uh, AJ McKee, interesting. A lot of people were telling me, or I'm seeing on social media, that he was walking around with a cane uh, before the fights. I don't know if he's injured or what's going on, but they had a, a, a showdown afterward. If you want to talk about explosiveness, unpredictability, man, Darren Caldwell versus AJ McKee, that's the fight, for sure. Well, you know, to that point, though, when you offer when somebody comes out and does what we expect them to do. In all honesty, we kind of expected Caldwell to come out and, and weigh yeah. an opponent down, um, you know, make, make it a laborious, difficult fight. And I, I'm not going to say that the door wasn't left open for him to get this submission. It certainly was. That that's that choke is, you know, elementary, you know, rear naked. You know, I mean, that's why I said I'd really be interested to see how his corner was trying to articulate him defending this because it, it is such a wide open opportunity to get it choked when you give up your back and your neck that way. Uh, how could you, like you said, how could you not be prepared for this to be one of the first things? But in that same light, you know, when we talked about what Caldwell does uh, from a standpoint where we both expect him to lose, it, it's not going and pressuring. It's not finishing. It's not taking advantage of those opportunities. It's stalling. It's weighing. It's, hesitancy it's trying to wear someone down and you know to be honest with you i think when you look at this fight in whole you know we basically got the exact opposite performance we expected from each fighter and in a situation like that you know i'm i'm glad to see that that's entertaining to me uh and this really was a fight that i did not think caldwell had in him well he's always had the ability to explode and be aggressive early when that doesn't work his weakness is that second and third level of, you know, if I can't pile on points early, can he win a long game? That kind of thing. He's done it before in previous fights. It's how he won the title. He won it by decision um, over Eduardo Dantes. He can do it, but that, that's that been – when he's failed, that's been the issue. Is keeping pressure on the entire time. He's always been able to 
expose fighters early. He's always been explosive early. He's always been athletic early. Um, when it hasn't worked out for him, when, when he got choked out by Baby Joe Time Inglo, he was winning that whole fight. But you could see the gas just getting spent. And by the end, he was he was really tired and, and fell for an easy guillotine. And it's one of those things where his inability to kind of get that second and third level, that might bite him later on in this tournament. We'll see. Um, but I'm looking for great things for him from him and AJ McKee for sure. Uh, moving up, we're going to obviously take a look at Cyborg and Bud. Uh, this is a milestone achievement for someone in our sport. I didn't initially mention, nor did you, the Invicta Championship, but I guess when you put them all together, you know, there is a quadruple crown that happens here that very few girls are going to be able, I mean, maybe no girl at this point, based on how long back the Strike Force title would go. Uh, there may not be a girl that ever is able to achieve uh, this level of dominance across platforms like we've seen from Chris Cyborg. And certainly she's an athlete and a fighter. Uh, in any you know way you want to look at that, you know I I put her right up there in terms of dominance with any champion, uh, male or female for that matter. Uh, but we saw, in my opinion, an aging Chris Cyborg tonight. Um, pressured very well, uh, extremely fluid in her movement. I was very impressed. Uh, she actually had the instinct to turn a slip into a triangle, and that is something that you can only do through you know you're not drilling that like we're gonna drill you slip and turn this into a triangle. Uh, she did an incredible job at putting a whole fight together. And we're, we're not used to seeing whole fights from her. Uh, unfortunately, wins and losses tend to kind of look uh, one-sided. But I thought we saw a, a volume Chris Cyborg tonight. Still definitely had power. I mean, put Bud down two or three times. But th this was a, a solid performance for her. But I don't know if she's... I don't. She's certainly not the fighter she used to be in terms of watching her fight. I mean, who is? You know, and I think that's a downside to her, you know, decade of dominance is, you know, every fight takes a little bit out of you. Every camp takes a little bit out of you. And you have to wonder how much you have left. Look, Julia Budd is a physical specimen. And I think this fight was determined in the first 30 seconds. She didn't take a forward step. She let Chris Cyborg dictate the fight. Remember, Amanda Nunes, the way she was able to win is step forward and literally punch Cyborg in the mouth. And let her know, I'm the boss. And then, you know, on her heels, trying to catch up with punches. It didn't work out for Cyborg. Julia Budd just let herself get pushed around and, and was always second, was always moving back, was always against the fence. Uh, she occasionally got some good clinch positions, showed how strong she was. She had enough physicality and athleticism to stay in the fight. You know, there was no one shot until that the, the body shot at the end that made you really think, man, that really hurt her. She's just strong. But if you don't offer an offense of your own, it you know doesn't matter. Someone as experienced as Cyborg is going to find a way to beat you. And she kept the pressure on and, and, and fought in spurts and good combinations and good accuracy and good power. If you're not hitting back and don't give her a reason to back off, she's never going to. She is an absolute pit bull. And it's one of those things where once she's she's focused like that, there's man, you gotta really get her off her game. That's what Nunez did well, but no one was able to do that to her her entire run until the Nunez fight. So Julia Budd just had enough to stay in it. You know, she's big for the weight class, she's strong, and it just you know, it took a while to 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 chop her down, but I didn't see any drama in this fight. I never saw a moment where I was like, man, maybe Julia Budd can do this. It almost seemed like she was waiting for Cyborg to come out, and you can't fight fight Cyborg that way. It doesn't work. It's interesting you look at it that way, because, I mean, I, I, saw, I, I saw situations where I was impressed with her not being demoralized. Uh, to go back to that point where, you know, Cyborg has a slip, Bud has an opening, uh, she tries to capitalize on it and gets caught in a triangle. H has to be, as a fighter, absolutely, you know, demoralizing. Not only that, she she turns into an illegal knee afterwards. So now, you know, here I am, you know, fighting this this legend, right? This elite caliber fighter. She's made a mistake. I tried to make her pay. I got caught in a triangle. Then I illegally need her, gave up my good position. At that point, you know, listen, a lot of fighters can be out of a fight. She still came back after that. Now, granted, we saw that cyborg power, but just I guess I'm not used to seeing this type of volume 
that Cyborg was throwing at her. And maybe that speaks to how good of an opponent Julia Buddy is. Uh, however, I will offer that when you look at both of these fights together as a whole, and you talk about, you know, as a consumer, what are we getting? And, and I know some people had kind of taken back to the fact that you would alluded these were free cards. I didn't actually correct you. T to me, at this point, I look at the zone and I look at you know ESPN Plus as free cards. It it's something yeah. that I'm buying, that, right? That's, th right. That that's what I meant by it. They're not pay per view level cards, and I, I'd like to make that distinction. They're on subscription services, and I understand that. Um, but just like you, like you just said, I, I generally see them as free cards, and that they're not pay per view level cards. That's what I meant by that. Right, and, and I think that when you know to kind of bring this whole weekend full circle we, we started off with luke thomas kind of comparing and contrasting these things you know more often than not from a bellator side i look at co-main and, and mains where i i don't want to really see them get run back and, and in these situations not that ufc was heavy on a run back maybe you run back yes this fight i don't know uh but both of these main events were pretty decisive to me and how they were lost. And I don't know if I want to see them run back. And to me, that's the kind of the true staple of a competitive, you know, a competitive card, right? A competitive fight. And when you look at them, when it's all said and done, you, you kind of see like, okay, I hate to put it this way, but it's pretty clear. A girl that was one of the best in the world, that was one of the best in the UFC, but then kind of got ushered out, can still go over to Bellator and put in a dominant performance. Sergio Pettis, same way. That is something I really think Bellator has to push away from. Would it really have hurt them to invert this main event and push their fighter higher at the end in terms of Caldwell and let Cyborg be the co-main? If, if it really is not a pay-per-view, and that was kind of my point, if it's something that you're getting anyway, what was the difference in promoting your fighter above everything else? Unless internally you have, you know, Bellator brass thought that this was Julia Bud's fight to win, which... I no. don't know. Yeah, I don't know how that no. could have been the case. Yeah. That 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 would have been a boneheaded decision to be like, oh, Julia Bud's going to win this one. Uh, I'm not saying it's impossible. I, I just want to make that abundantly clear. I think Julia Julia Bud's an excellent fighter and all these things. Uh, the smart money was on Cyborg, and we saw why. And and one thing I want to say is, as you said, you know, Julia Bud was never demoralized. She, she was never defeated. I, I I get that mentally. She didn't just check out. But she didn't step forward like she felt she could do something to Cyborg. You know what I mean? I never got that moment of like that she felt that that her offense could get something done. That's what I meant by kind of standing there waiting. It seemed like she was waiting for Cyborg to pull the trigger. And and that's the worst thing you could do. But, you know, I, I'm not saying she collapsed. What I'm saying is that she she never seemed to offer a meaningful offense of her own. And And that was a turning point in this fight to me is when the first – once again, minute of the fight, she didn't step forward offensively. I was like, ah, oh, it's done. It's done. It might happen first round. It might take a little while. If you don't hit the gas and show Cyborg that you're willing to, you know, stand with her and trade, you, you're in trouble. Or you're willing to do something, you're in trouble. Um, the the One of the difficulties of this, this fight tonight, and you and I were texting about it while it was happening, the pacing, they kept going back to the desk and all this stuff that, it is comparatively new for Bellator. And what I, what I mean is, is they only started that really the, I want to say the Madison Square Garden card. Um, Fedor and Matt Mertione, Chelsea and uh, Vanderlei Silva, they had some desk stuff there, but they've really added a lot of that. A lot of desk and sideline stuff. And I thought between the co-main and main, there was just a huge gap that, that was really difficult to get through because it was just a, a, a lot of waiting for the main event. Yeah. I mean, as, as cold hearted as it's going to sound, I, I just don't care. I, I don't, don't sell me on the next Bellator fight. I don't really, I'm here to watch your event and the promise that I'm going to somehow care enough to make it to the next one. It's, it's almost like they continue to try to sell you on how good they are. And I find that very, very odd as somebody that's already watching it on a paid platform. What is your commercial obligation now? You, you're not doing anything else. I, I understand if it's a pay-per-view. I, I truly do. But at the same time, this isn't a pay-per-view. This is DAZN. You know, let's get this show on the road. Like, I don't... As soon as that fight ended with Caldwell, I was like, oh, God. You know, there's 20 minutes of filler in front of me right now. And, yeah. and, th and thankfully, 
you know, a past couple events when they've had big main events, I, I'm one of the most patriotic people you'll find. But at the same time, like the, the stance they were taking where they're playing the national anthems for each you know country, they're coming out of people sing. Like, I don't know if that was filler that they just didn't have available tonight. But, you know, I can deal. I, I think most people have an issue dealing with UFC dragging out. When you start, you know, as a second tier fighting organization dragging out, it's got to be a big turnoff for people that are already committed to the price. I've already paid it for the year. Just give me what I'm here for and let me go on my way. I don't really want to hear about, you know, Ruth versus, I can't even tell you who he's fighting. I mean, I know it sounds awful. We'll, maybe we'll cover it. Maybe we won't. But I, I was more intrigued that <laughs> Proper 12 is on every cage anywhere in the world, apparently. Yeah, it is kind of funny. Um, look, for every fight, but Archuleta versus Corrales, okay, leading up to the main event, it was a grand total of 10 minutes, 10 minutes and what, 40, 45 seconds, the whole card, 10 minutes and 45 seconds of fighting. So what happens? So production-wise, people are in the back and they're not ready yet, maybe. You know, they're still wrapping their hands. We weren't ready for all these fights to go this fast. So you got to put in all this filler. Now, I don't know what they're, they're what they what they would call their commercial load, meaning um, you have to get out so many advertisements for the next show. There could be a contractual obligation to do that from the zone. You got to pimp the next event. So, they're, you know, whatever it is. And you got to dump all that stuff. But I can't imagine... Darion Caldwell, Adam Borix is getting ready, and they don't have the main event ready to go. Now, I don't know. It, it, fighter operations and all those things, it, it may take a while to get that going. But there are all kinds of reasons why you see a bunch of commercials and stuff. And it was the same thing in the last UFC. Not this one tonight, but the one before uh, with Conor McGregor. Oh, why are there all these commercials for the next UFC? Well, the, the show has to go till you know, X number of hours because it's a pay-per-view. They have to fill that time because they don't know how long the main event's going to be. So they have to dump all their video packages and all stuff. They have to dump that stuff. I don't know what the situation is with DAZN in terms of that. Maybe DAZN says, look, you need to fill X, X number of hours of air and that's it. And I don't care if you have 10 minutes of fighting. You have to fill the rest with something because we're contractually obligated to fill X amount of time. And so they end up doing all this stuff and video packages and back to the desk and back to this and back to that. And here's this. You don't know what the obligations are, but it led to a show where, you know, if if I had to be on with you tonight, Ryan, I, I would have fallen asleep. And I, that's not I'm not critical of the fights. They were they were entertaining. It was with that gap. I was falling asleep. It's almost one in the morning. I've been watching fight for I don't know how many hours I would have just watched it tomorrow. Yeah, it's almost like they don't understand totally their their place in the landscape and, and i don't know how they can't because you're literally pillaging fighters from the other divisions uh jimmy from the other series but I, I, you know it's something that i think they really having went to ufc events and and sat there through it or actually went to bellator events and don't get me wrong i i for for all the the things that we just did bellator does a lot of things good for the fans that are there right you've got the elaborate walks to take up a whole bunch of seats that ufc could never do they they do a lot of good things they do a lot and provide a lot of entertainment but with all due respect, their hype packages, their promotional pieces, their documentary series, I'm sorry, they're just not on the level of UFC. And they're not going to be because they don't have that budget. So, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're almost trying to make me want to care when I really don't care as much. And, and, you know, to the people in the comment section that say, hey, why don't you guys cover Bellator more? This is why. Some, sometimes it's hard to watch this stuff. And we were fortunate tonight that, you know, they weren't on at the same time. They kind of backed into each other. But, you know, at the same time, I was really also kind of thinking, like, I wonder if they're going to show Aaron Pico's fight during this big lawn out draw and this lull. But they didn't. But since we did mention him, Aaron Pico working hard to put himself back on the map. So good for him, too. Yeah, good for him. First off, one thing I'll say is, is they they do excellent if you look at the video quality and the editing and everything bellator does cut very very good packages they do great promo stuff um it's a matter of where you put it you know in between the, the main and co-main i feel like they went over the same subjects 
and went back to the remember I have the volume off. I don't know what they're talking about, but they went back to the desk three or four times. Now I don't care what the desk is talking about. It doesn't need to be gone over three or four times. It's that the rep the repetitive nature of it. And you talked about the 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 Ed Ruth video piece. Like we you know they went to a couple of them. Now I don't know if they had to dump that load for some reason, meaning the the commercial load, the the video pieces and packages they have that they get rid of them. Uh, I don't know what the reason was. Um, Aaron Pico getting the win over Daniel Carey. He's where he's supposed to be. He's where he should have been in the beginning, which is, you know, fighting guys on the way up, blowing guys out and building his name up. He just started out too high against too many veteran names and it cost him. Now he's got to get, go back to the beginning and, and kind of start over. And he's a talented kid, kid. He's young. Um, you wonder how much the knockouts have taken out of him. He's taken some serious damage, but it's 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 almost like okay, we 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 started a little too hot here. We started a little too fast. Let's let's move back a little bit. So I think they're doing the right thing. It's just a matter of how long it takes to get back to where he was. Yeah, I agree. And thankfully, he's in a position uh, where, like you said, hopefully the damage hasn't, I guess, added up enough where they can still. I mean. I, there's no better way to put this. He's an investment for Bellator, and they risked their investment a lot. So it's good to see that they're still in a position where they can get a lot out of that because, you know, at the end of the day, kind of to bring everything back to where we were, Bellator, in my opinion, needs to focus on its fighters, the fighters that it brings in, the names that it makes, and pull back a little bit less from, you know, even if they are elite talent, you know, buying these aging fighters and bringing them in and putting them on main events, even if they're dream matchups, I don't always want to see that. I'm I'm glad that I got to see Chris Cyborg fight. I respect that tonight is MMA history to a degree, but it does in a way trouble me just a bit that it happens, you know, at the expense of Bellator's own talent. Because again, you know, you're not always going to have people that when you don't have the second level or out the door UFC stars and you have to sell this just on your own people like with Ruth I I'm not going to be there for it right? I mean I, I guess it's yet to be determined I get less excited about it because you haven't pushed these stars to the point that you should have well the tough thing is whenever you invest in UFC talent uh, somebody like Cyborg, somebody like a Gegard Mousasi you, you, you need to recoup your investment. You, enough people need to watch that it makes sense to pay a lot of money for them because they're expensive. But you don't want them coming in and wrecking your division and destroying your champion. Because once again, you'll have fans go, well, you know, UFC fighters are so much better than Bellator fighters, which isn't necessarily always the case. Um, but it's it's a matter of that fine line. You want the attention. You want the notoriety. You want people to watch them. Uh, you want attention on them, but you don't want them to just come in here and wreck house. And Cyborg knocking out Julia Budd, which would have been the smart money call from the beginning, uh, she just came in there and just beat up your champ in a division where you don't have a lot of talent. So we'll see what they do with that from the beginning, but that's always the choice. Do I invest in the talent that's homegrown or do I invest in the free agency? Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. Well, they went 3-0 tonight, so listen, for those of you that are watching or listening to this, uh, we sincerely appreciate your ability to stay up with us and listen to this coverage and the support you give us. Uh, as far as there were some comments, Jimmy, no UFC, no real fight cards next week, maybe a Q&A, undecided. We, we are dedicated to content. If you didn't know by now, it's 1.05 a.m. We better be dedicated. If not, we're insane. So we will uh, have some some other things during the course of the week. Um, we've got, hopefully, a big announcement to share with you guys coming up in the next uh, week and a half. So stay tuned. There's some exciting things coming down the pike for you guys, and we will be back very shortly with more commentary.